Uncle Frank, The Battle of the Bulge, and Florida are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is January 25th, 2023. It is the 25th day of the year. There are 340 days left. It is the fourth Wednesday in the fourth week and the 36th day of winter. You got 54 days left until spring. If today's your birthday, you're an Aquarius. Today we start a series of abbreviated versions of these videos because I am traveling. I don't want to just skip a bunch of days, so I have to knock a whole bunch out. So they'll be a little bit shorter than normal and we'll be back to our normal length on the 7th of February. Today is National Florida Day. National Florida Day is celebrated on January 25th every year. The day was established to recognize Florida's rival as the 27th state in the Union. It is known as the Sunshine State and it's famous for its warm and sunny weather along with its beautiful landscapes. The beautiful landscapes thing, okay, they got great beaches. They got some wetlands, but they don't have any mountains or things like that. It's just, I guess it's a preference. I need, you know, pine trees trees, cold weather, and mountains. Florida doesn't have anything above a hill. That's not saying Florida isn't a beautiful state. Their beaches are amazing, and the Keys down there in the southern section of Florida is pretty amazing too. The original explorer Ponce de Leon named it Florida, sort of. He called it Pascua, Florida, which I probably didn't do a good job of pronouncing that properly. Tried to get a hold of Ellie who works for us, and she speaks fluent Spanish, but she wasn't available, so I'm guessing. But it means festival and flowers, roughly in Spanish. Florida has been owned by several different groups of people. A few different groups of Native Americans, including the Seminoles. Great Britain had a chunk of it for a while. The Spanish did also. It became a territory of the United States in 1821. And finally, in 1845, Florida was admitted into the Union as the 27th state. All right, let's see what else January 25th has given us. 1585, Walter Riley is knighted shortly after renaming the North American region Virginia in honor of Elizabeth I, Queen of England, sometimes referred to as the Virgin Queen. 1819, the University of Virginia is chartered by the Commonwealth of Virginia with Thomas Jefferson as one of the founders. 1915, Alexander Graham Bell inaugurates the U.S. Transcontinental Telephone Service, speaking from New York to Thomas Watson in San Francisco. 1945, World War II, the Battle of the Bulge ends. And we've talked about this quite a few times on this channel. And it's an amazing part of American history. Obviously, an amazing part of World War II. <laughs> The Battle of the Bulge is also known as the Ardennes Offensive. It was the last major German offensive in the Western Front during World War II. The battle lasted five weeks from December 16th, 1944 to 25 January 1945. Now, that's when all the hostilities kind of ended, but it was about three days later that it was finally over. After a major battle like that, there's a little mopping up to do, and that's just going house to house looking for enemy soldiers. Not Actually, I said that one time to someone, and they're all, you mop up the blood from a war? No, you don't. Mopping up means going to village to village, house to house, looking for enemy soldiers, looking for your own wounded. And the whole thing was over by January 28th. The reason that was only three days later, it was extremely cold weather, and they figure anyone that was wounded on the ground had expired. There was other reasons for it, but that was one of the main ones. 1961 in Washington, D.C., President John F. Kennedy delivers the first live presidential television news conference. 1964, Blue Ribbon Sports, which would later be Come Nike is founded by the University of Oregon track and field athletes. There's been a few different movies uh, about the founding of it. Like there's one called Prefontaine where they kind of touch on it. But the whole way Nike came into being is amazing. Phil Knight, who was the founder and the CEO and everything of Nike for a very long time, he obviously he was the man for Nike. But there were a bunch of people that played a big role in what that company became, especially Bill Bowerman. The guy used waffle irons to make the bottom of the first Nike shoes. I should say the first experimental blue ribbon sports shoes. Movies released on January 25th, 2020, Uncle Frank, a literature professor, returns home to attend his father's funeral, accompanied by his teenage niece. The road trip movie was written and directed by Alan Ball. It was pretty good. I liked it. I, you know, I wouldn't have gone to the theater to see it, but it was on Amazon. I watched it. It was pretty good. Is it an Academy Award winning movie? No, it's just a decent movie to sit down, relax and watch. Born on January 25th, 1981, Alicia Keys, first singer to receive five Grammy Awards at once after releasing her debut album, Songs in a Mirror. She does have an amazing voice. Not really my type of music, but 
Yeah, she's amazing. There's a great song uh, that she sang with Jay-Z called Empire State of Mind. Great song. Died on January 25th, 2017. We lost Mary Tyler Moore. I did not know she had been gone that long. I honestly thought she'd maybe died in 2020, 2021, something like that. She's an actress best known for starring on the Mary Tyler Moore show and for playing Laura Petrie in the Dick Van Dyke show. She also appeared in a whole bunch of movies. She was in a great movie in, I think, 1980 called Ordinary People. It's a great movie. Very, It's a drama. Uh, don't expect a lot of action. Don't lo- expect a lot of humor. And it's kind of sad but it's a pretty good movie. I watched this thing when she was on the Dick Van Dyke show, and that came out when, you know, things were changing in the United States. And she was a young, very attractive woman who played a housewife. But she was a modern housewife who wore not mini skirts, but pretty tight-fitting skirts on the show. And they'd filmed a couple episodes. I forget how the story goes, but they'd filmed like a handful of episodes. And then the lawyers for the television studio came out and said, no, the skirts are too tight. You could actually see the crease at the bottom of her butt. They made him film a bunch of scenes over because of that. They said skirts had to start at the waist and basically go straight down. They couldn't follow the curve of of someone's body. Those dudes would have a heart attack if they saw some of the things on television these days. Mary Tyler Moore was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 1969. In 2014, friends reported that Mary Tyler Moore had heart and kidney problems and was nearly blind from complications related to her diabetes. Moore died at the age of 80 on January 25th 2017 from cardiopulmonary arrest complicated by pneumonia. Never met her, but she's one of those people that was always on television and you just feel like she was a decent person. Who knows though? All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.